Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm Alicia Female Fans. Steve Alicia's here with the Motorola Q from 2006. Part of a series, well, it's only been one so far, but we're going to make it a series, that we're just going to get every 3G CDMA device that we could possibly get our hands on new in the box and do videos on them while they're still able to be activated, even if it's just for calls and texts. So we're going to send the 1X network and the 3G network out, Irish Wake style. We're going to burn it down and activate every single possible 3G device that we can in the coming weeks. So this is, if you count, this is one of six. It will be one of seven if you count the Palm Trio 700P. And it is the Motorola Q. Now this is one that even though this one's new in the box, I have some knowledge of this device because I used one. Back in the day, 2006 on Verizon. This was actually the phone that I had right before I got an iPhone. So I, I liked it quite a bit and I expressed, I don't want to call it remorse, but I, I went over the story of how I chose this device over the 700P, the Trio 700P at the time. But it's not because I disliked this. I actually like this phone quite a bit. But it's just I, I wish I could have experienced both. So pretty slim form factor for the time. It was nice. It had a good keyboard, decent display, nice buttons. I like the bluish illumination on the screen. So let's take a look at the box that you would have gotten from Sprint back in the day. So this is, there are two versions. There was the Q, or the Motorola Q9M and Q9C, but one was Verizon and one was Sprint. So this one you saw was kind of the silverish color here. This one's going to be a darker kind of gunmetal gray color there. So let's take a look at the box. What do we have on the side? Sprint Mobile Broadband Device, thank you very much. Mini USB data cable, so you have mini SD card, mini, and mini USB, so no micro USB just yet. Take a look at the back. All-in-one window smart mobile device, and people could laugh, and they pop, there's the AOL again. AOL, Comcast, Gmail, Yahoo, 1.3 megapixel camera. I believe it's going to have Windows 5.0. Perhaps 6.0, Windows Mobile 5 or 6.0. I believe it was capable of both. It may have came with one and that installed another one. And people can laugh at Windows Mobile all they want. But you have to. You can't compare it to what we have today. Kind of look at iOS and Android and say, geez, you know, what, what, what the heck were we using back then? You have to compare it to its time period. You had Palm OS, which was fine, but had its complications, especially when you're talking about mobile devices. You had BlackBerry, which was the gold standard for a long time, but it had its quirkiness as well and stuff that you had to work around. And then there was Windows Mobile, which I thought, when I was using it, worked quite well, especially when you're coming off of the software, the proprietary software that was on like your Motorola Razor or something like that, one of those LG phones that you could barely do anything on. When you got to this, it was definitely a step up. So you had apps, calendar, wireless email, and the email program, and you can see it there, actually was quite nice compared to some of the other mobile email programs that you got at the time. So let's open this one up. Let's see what we got here. Thinner, and it is thinner, faster and thinner. It was a, a pretty thin device for the time period. Oh, there it is. As it would have looked new. Let's put that aside. No battery in it just yet. Got your books. And it's a, this, is when you got, this is when you got a proper manual. You could club somebody with this if you needed to. Look at this thing. Subscriber agreement, all the rest of it. Software for putting stuff on there for the data transfer. Put this on your PC of the time. Charger. There's the mini USB. And no no USB-A on the end of that. That straight wall to mini USB. Got the battery and the back cover for the device. And then just a data transfer cable for the device itself. So no headphones, nothing like that. It did have a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top. But let's take a look. Take it out of the bag. Oh, I'm kind of liking the gray. I can tell already. I like the silver. I'm not going to complain, but I'm liking the gray. Go ahead and remove this. Ooh. Yeah, let's see if we could get the difference here between the two versions. Yeah, so on the Verizon, you can see kind of this grayish around the border of the screen and then the very light silver. But then on the Samsung, I mean Samsung, the Sprint device. Oh, this is one of the special ones. This is one of the ones that came out later. And I'm glad that it's actually in decent shape. So I didn't know that. 
So this is the standard one, okay? That was basically, that's why it said lighter and thinner on the packaging, faster and thinner. This one is the standard one, kind of the plastic silver, okay? But what we have here is one of the ones that came out later. This material here is actually slightly rubberized and I'm glad it hasn't aged poorly because a lot of times you get rubberized material from the mid 2000s, it is goop as the kind of oils separate from the rubber. But this is a rubberized like you get on the back of a modern day Blackberry. So that's quite nice. And if I remember correctly, it was a 15% better battery life, a touch thinner, uh, but also faster as well. They upgraded the speed on it. So that's going to be fun. So what we're going to do, and look, is this, is this just the way this was? I thought there was maybe a blue sticker on there, but that might just be the way that that was designed there to be blue at the top. That's pretty neat. And then the keyboard lights up blue. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead. I'm going to activate this red pocket mobile still activates these things, at least for the next nine months or so. I'm going to activate it. I'm going to use it for a couple days. I'm going to come back. We're going to go through the OS, show you some stuff and what you're still able to do with one in 2021. Stay right there. We'll be right back. And we're back. It's actually been a few weeks since I shot the unboxing of the Motorola Q because I've been using it quite a bit. And I'd like to thank Josh for being our test subject, getting all those text messages from a different number. And it's a lot of what I remembered out of the Motorola Q. It had, it wasn't a speed demon and it never was. And if you're somebody who was coming from Pocket PC, like I was, you know, a, a Pocket 2000 on my HP iPack, those type of devices, then this was a natural transition to a mobile device for you. But you also knew that Windows Mobile and Pocket PC before it could be awfully powerful. You could do a heck of a lot with it, but you had to have a little bit of patience. And if you're coming from a Palm platform or a BlackBerry, that might be a little frustrating for you because it was actually input lag just on texting. And I do remember that from my Verizon one from back in the day. You'd actually have to make sure and wait like a little, like a beat between each letter to make sure that they had registered properly. And then you could go ahead and send your text. Now, I like this the new, I guess for Sprint, they put a different coating on it and they tried this for Verizon as well. They put a rubberized texture. And the thing I could relate it to is if you have a BlackBerry Passport, it feels like the back of your passport, but it's the entire device. It's covering it. And it's great because my hard touch plastic Verizon Motorola Q would get scratches and dings and all kinds of things just from regular use. I'm talking about you put it in your cup holder in your car and you were getting scratches from it and it used to annoy me because I am not rough on my phones by far. I'm very gentle with them, a soft touch of course. And so it r really bugged me when I just keep getting new scratches, new dings, gouges, all kinds of things. But this has been great. Been carrying it around and you can tell it's just just more a more durable material, something that's not gonna be as prone to just minor surface scratches, which is great. And it also adds some grip to it, which is missing on the original so overall build quality on the newer version it's not the 9 qc or whatever when they came out with later which is actually a different design it's the original one just a little lighter a little faster and with that different coating on it they made it lighter it wasn't an overall heavy device especially if you're comparing it to blackberries of the day which were quite bulky this was a thin device solid love the keyboard always have it's fantastic the spacing is great I love when the lettering is raised there. It makes it so I could put my entire thumb on it and type. And I was coming from a 7200 series BlackBerry, which wasn't bad. But I just love the fact that for the first time on a mobile device that I had been using in 2006, I could actually put my entire thumb on there and not have to worry about my bigger thumbs mashing multiple keys at once, which was a great, great, great typing experience so i love that overall i love the indigo glow that it has on the and the directional pad there and the home row and then the keys kind of backlit by that bluish glow reminded me of the indigo kind of casio watches from back in the day which i liked which was quite nice so overall it works the same as it did great experience i wasn't able to provision it for data so that was a bit of a shame i couldn't put some of the old uh try some of the old programs and stuff like that that i would have on here but overall it worked well the only thing i could that, that was a complaint that i'm sure i could get a third-party software 
thing installed on here that took care of that. I never did it back when I was using the Motorola Q as my main device. But when you're doing text messages, I won't show because it will reveal some phone numbers. When you're doing text messages, it did them very much like your flip phones of yesteryear, in which it's just a string. There's no real conversation string. It's just what you got, and then you could go to a separate folder and see what you sent. So you really didn't have, if it had been a few minutes, and this is something that we used to just have to get used to, if it had been a few minutes or an hour or so between when you sent a text and when you received a reply, you might have to look back in your sent folder and see what exactly it was you were talking about, which actually happened a couple of times here. So that was a good little uh, trip down memory lane as well. It had some decent things on it. I had been, I was playing around with Media Player, Windows Media. You could get the, the, the feeling of nostalgia for that screen right there. So it had it has some media functionality, which was good. I wouldn't use a heck of a lot of that on here, only because the battery life, I remember not being the greatest. And that was certainly my experience with this one. And I can't blame it on age. I could b blame it on the battery aging, perhaps, because it had been in a box for 15 years. But it isn't all that different of an experience from what I remember 15 years ago using this. The battery life, not the greatest. I remember always having to plug it in to a car charger or something like that to keep it charged up. But if you if you knew, like I said, if, you, if you're coming from Pocket PC and you were used to it, you, 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 were, you were comfortable with it. The folder system, the menus, how it was set up. It, it was kind of like a PDA that they, they, they then put mobile functionality to. And that was that was okay because we were really coming from like a Motorola Razor and stuff like that. And there was another Motorola phone, flip phone that I had from texting. So this was really Pocket MSN. Come on. Come on. Pocket MSN back in the day. Games. You could get your Windows Solitaire experience right there. Overall, a nice device. It was nice to get it activated again. I'm really enjoying that for as long as these devices can be activated, probably until the end of the year. But overall, if you used one of these... Let me know in the comment section below. Most people that I know that used him, even though the reviews at the time were sluggish, that was my experience, they liked him. They liked him being full featured. They liked the functionality. They liked being able to just plug it in and sync it to their Windows PC, which of course, you know, everybody and their mother had back then. I just plug it in, and even today. But I mean, back then it was, it was the market dominance of the Windows machines was incredible. So you pop it in there and you'd be able to get your Outlook and your calendar and everything all ready for your day, your meetings, and everything like that. But overall, the call, call, call quality was good. Feeling in the hand was always excellent. Uh, excellent compared to the Blackberries. I know everybody loves the Blackberries. You got the wheel as well, because I guess they feel like they wanted to attract people coming over for Blackberry. But I like the fact that it also has the D-pad pointing device with the button in the center, because my thumb was killing me on my BlackBerry 7200 series because it's just not a natural, natural great feeling. So it was nice to have the D-pad right there. Nice, big, comfy keyboard. Some quirky features. I don't like where the shift was on it. I don't like it to go back. If I made a mistake typing, I'd have to go way up here to the buttons up here in order to the hard plastic touch buttons in order to be able to go in and delete stuff. So it was kind of, oh, oh man, I made a mistake. You're looking to go over here for a delete or a backspace. You got to go way up here. So there were some quirks to it, but overall a great device. But if you used it, let me know. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-alicious day.